Okay, we seem to be recording. Hi, this is Robert from SpiritKick.com. A little commentary about something coming up in a little over a half hour. For those of you who don't know, I live in California. So, the California Supreme Court, in about a half hour, 45 minutes, is supposed to put their response to uh, Proposition 8. So, once again, California's Supreme Court is going to end up in history one way or the other. So, if they, if they happen to choose to uphold Prop 8, it raises one question, where if they happen to overturn it, it raises another question. So let's start with the one I'm hoping for, being that I am gay, uh, that they overturn it. If they overturn it, then people like myself would be allowed to marry our partners, and we would have all the rights and privileges of a civil contract called marriage in this country that heterosexual couples have. Now, there are those on the conservative right who say, I shouldn't have those rights. That is a special institution reserved for only heterosexuals. Well, for those who claim it's a religious institution, the simple fact is the religious institution is only a ceremony that takes place in a church. All the rights and privileges, obligations and responsibilities too, don't think I'm forgetting them, those are put into place by a civil contract and the state should not have the right or the privilege of deciding who can and who cannot enter into that civil contract so that's one place the way they're going to go and sooner or later that question is going to get raised because the simple fact is marriage isn't a religious institution the only part of it that is is the ceremony in a church so now, what happens if they overturn it? I mean, if they don't overturn it? Well, that raises a very interesting question. Now, the proponents of Prop 8 say that, well, we have the voting will of the public, and that you know the, the, the uh, justices should not be making decisions on it. But if, what if the voting will of the public is just wrong and is unconstitutional? Which, in this case, I don't know how this bill got even allowed to be on. We've had many ballot measures that were determined to be illegal or against uh, or improper before voting and were taken off the ballot. And we'll see these things were Prop 82 removed. I'm, I'm choosing a number. So. Now, the question becomes... Sorry, need my coffee. So the question becomes, if they don't overturn, if they uphold that Prop 8 stands, here was a law that was written, passed by the voters, albeit, I believe it's Prop 22, found by the Supreme Court to be in violation of the, of the Constitution and hence struck down as a violation of the Equal Protection Clause. This exact same law, there is not one word of difference in Prop 8 and Prop 22. The only difference is where in the code it's stated. This law has been found to be unconstitutional. I don't know how it made it onto the ballot, I don't know how it made it this far, and I don't know how it can be upheld. If it is upheld, it raises an interesting question. If the majority decides that something that they would pass a law on that is unconstitutional, if by inserting it, it becomes constitutional, what is to stop the rights of interracial marriage, women's vote, you know, and all these questions. People go, oh, well, you're going too far. But you know something? It's not that hard to believe. If you can take a law that has been found to be in this condition and then put it into the Constitution and say it's valid, this really opens up a big question. So, in about 40 minutes, the California website, the California State Supreme Court, sorry, is supposed to put their decision on. Let's see what happens, and let's see which question they wish to go down with for eternity. Because, I guarantee you, this is going to be documented one way or another. Oh, and one little footnote. To the people who are quote-unquote protecting marriage, who say they will take this to the Federal Supreme Court, go back to your civics class because the federal supreme court does not have the right to overrule the state supreme court in this type of matter people in this country consistently forget that we are a union of 50 independent states and that the federal government 
does not have the power to overrule the states. You know, and to say otherwise is to forget your history. Anyway, so it is what is it, 26th of uh, 26th of May, I think it is, and it is getting close to D-Day for the Supreme Court. Keep an idea on the uh, keep an idea on the uh, idea. Keep, keep your eye on the website that will be down below, and we will see uh, what happens. Anyway, have a really blessed day, no matter what happens. Know that even if you don't love same-sex couples, you don't have to love them, but you do have to acknowledge that you don't have the right to to decree who they can enter into a contract with. That would be like Joe's Auto Body Shops being told that they cannot go into a joint business venture with the Fiat dealership because they're an independent body shop and the other one's Fiat. Sounds stupid, but believe me, it's really the same thing. Anyway, have a really good day and let's see what happens. We'll talk later. Bye-bye.